I think we can appreciate now how useful data is in programming. We can see how by providing different values to our functions, that we can control how that function executes. We can control how large or how small a shape is, or where it is positioned. We can use RGB values to specify what colour a shape or line will be, or even to set the background colour for our canvas. We've also seen how we can set a value for our program that affects all future function calls, such as declaring that all future shapes will be filled with a colour blue or the thickness of a line. The key to making this work in programming is that we can store particular values or settings for our program in what are called variables, as we saw in the previous training video. A variable is a location in the memory of our program where a value is stored. We can access that location and the value by using the name of the variable. This means that we can store values for use later on in our programs and access them by using the name of the variable, just as we would have previously used the value directly. Why would we want to do this? One important reason is that it makes our programs easier to understand and change if we need to. If we wanted to make all of the shapes 50% bigger in our program, it would be a lot easier if we could simply change a small number of variables rather than having to change every value used in every function call to create a shape. Another reason is that we can also modify the values stored in variables. This is a very powerful concept in programming and one that we will focus on in this lesson. Imagine that we wanted to draw a series of rectangles with each rectangle being double the height of the previous rectangle. We could do this by using a variable that holds the current height value that we want. And then we can update that value as our program executes. First, let's create a canvas, in this case 120 pixels wide and 300 pixels high. We then create a new variable called h, which is an integer variable and has the value 10. An integer variable is a variable that can hold an integer numerical value, such as 0, minus 10, or 15. In this example, integer is what we call the type of the data. There are also other data types that we can use, which we will see shortly. Continuing on with our example, we could use our variable h in place of an expected parameter value when calling a function. So for example, we could use it in a call to the rect function to tell the rect function how high the rectangle should be. This is exactly the same result as if we had written this and says that the rectangle should be 10 pixels high. So what is the difference? What is the purpose of using variables when we could just simply enter the values? The main difference is that variables can be updated by assigning them a new value. That new value would then be read the next time we access the variable's value. For example, here we change the value of h to be the current value of h multiplied by 2. So you can interpret this as first working out the value of the expression on the right hand side of the equal sign. In this case, it is the value of the expression. Or the current value of h multiplied by 2. If we work this out, this gives us 10 multiplied by 2, which gives us the value 20. We then take that value, the value 20, and we assign that to be the new value of h. So next time that we call the rect function, when it reads the value of h to specify the height of the rectangle, it now says that it should create a rectangle that is 20 pixels high. We can then execute the same instructions again. What would the value of h be now? We go through the same process, first calculating the value of the expression to the right of the equal sign. In this case, we read the current value of h, now 20, and multiply it by 2. This gives us the value 40. We then update the value of the variable h to now be 40. When we call the rect function the third time, we then create a rectangle that is 40 pixels high. In summary, each time we update the value of h in this example, what we do is read the current value, multiply that by 2, and then write the new value into the variable location.